Hello guys, is Dr. Emmanuel, a general practitioner in the United Kingdom. Um, I want us to talk about the P450 enzyme inhibitors and inducers. Why is it important for us to talk about the P450 enzyme inhibitors or inducers? As a general practitioner, I'm very much involved in prescribing medications, you know, altering medications, initiating medications uh, for, for my patients. That's what I do. And that's what a lot of health professionals, you know, doctors, advanced nurse practitioners um, and, and many other professionals, health professionals do. We're involved in, you know, uh, medication prescribing, even pharmacists. Uh, so the P450 enzymes essentially are a group of enzymes that are found within the liver. And what these enzymes do is that they are involved in the metabolism of medications. So when we take medications, um, a couple of these medications are metabolized by these P450 enzymes. And there are certain medications that increase the activity of these P450 enzymes, as well as certain other medications that kind of you know suppress or inhibit or reduce the activity of these enzymes. And what that means is that they can then affect how much of the of other of some of these other medications are available to the body. So if you're taking a particular medication, let's say atovastatin, to reduce your your blood cholesterol level or to reduce your overall risk of developing a heart attack or stroke and you take a medication that suppresses the activity of an enzyme that is supposed to break down or metabolize statin, what that means is that you have excess statin accumulating and you can then have excess statin side effects. So it's just for us to understand why it's actually important um, to understand the P450 enzymes and how it works. So this can affect how medications, how effective you know, medic certain medications would be and obviously uh, side effect profile of some medications. Now let's look at the end, those medications that actually increase, you know, uh, or induce or enhance the activity of this P450 uh, hepatic or liver enzymes. So those medications, um, you know, by increasing or enhancing the P450 uh, activity, what they do is that they break down some other medications very rapidly. So there are medications that go through first pass metabolism, which means they go through the liver. You, you ingest the medication, you take it in orally, you know, it's absorbed by your intestine, intestines, you know, goes, goes into what we call your portal blood flow, and then it gets to your liver. And then your liver metabolizes, you know, uh, some of these medications. So, if the medication is, if you induce these uh, P450 enzymes, what they have, what means is that they can metabolize, you know, or break down some of these medications, some of these other medications very fast, very quickly. And then you might end up having, of course, those medications will have their effect, but the duration of the effect will be shorter. Well, and then you, what it then means is that you might need to give a higher dose of that medication, of the medication, of the desired medication now. Of the medication that is being affected secondarily, you might not have to give a higher dose of that medication for it to have uh, this the same effect it, it, it would normally have. I'll explain with examples. So there are some there's an acronym for for the P450 enzyme inducers, or in, of course there are many more you know medications that fall within this category. But an acronym which I came across is CRAP GPs. I'm a GP, I'm not a CRAB GP, but obviously it's an acronym, CRAB GPs. And it stands for carbamazepine, rifampicin, alcohol, chronic alcoholism, you know, enhances or induces P450 enzyme, whereas binge drinking or acute alcohol intake actually suppresses it. So phenytoin, griseofulvin, glucocorticoids like dexamethasone, prednisolone also enhance the P450 enzymes. Phenobarbitone, or you can call it pheno, pheno, phenobarbital, you know, increases uh, or enhances P450 enzymes. St. John's wort, which is uh, used, which has some antidepressant effects, you know, also um, 
enhances or induces or increases the p450 enzyme activity and what this means is i think recently i was prescribing i was considering prescribing carbamazepine for a patient for trigeminal neuralgia you know pain nerve nerve pain uh, or neuropathic pain you know affecting the trigeminal nerve causing the patient to have a facial pain and first line is carbamazepine but i had to obviously uh, double check with the other patients with other with the other medications that the patient was taking uh, and it flagged up as a drug interaction that carbamazepine was going to reduce the availability of the other medication the patient was on and how is that going to do that because P carbamazepine is a p450 enzyme inducer so p450 enzymes will be work of working a lot in the liver you know metabolizing breaking down uh, you know a lot of the other medication the patient is already on and what that means is that uh, the patient will not be gaining having the same benefit they were previously having from the other medication that they were you know that they were, they, that they were already taking so i had to not prescribe carbamazepine i had to prescribe you know uh, an alternative gabapentin so it's just for us to understand how um you know the effect of some of these medications on the liver enzymes how it affects our choice of medications the good thing is that the bnf the british national uh, drug formulary you know um not really the bnf now but the inbuilt you know inbuilt systems within the within the it systems we use in consulting usually flag those kind of you know, drug interactions but it's usually good to know them so that even if um by any chance, those uh, inbuilt IT systems don't flag up interactions. We should be checking them because you can't put the blame actually on on an IT. You know, if something uh, wrong happens. Now let's look at the P four fifty. So that's P four fifty, not P forty. So P four fifty enzyme inhibitors or suppressors. Those that reduce the activities of the P four fifty enzymes in the liver. Uh, what it means is that when you suppress the P450, which is supposed to metabolize or break down medications, when you suppress the activity of those enzymes, you will then have an excess amount of the other medication in the blood or in the body, not being broken down, you know, staying in the body for longer durations, having longer effects. And obviously that can then lead to side effects. I'll give you an example. We'll talk about the example at the end as well, but let me just mention it at this point. Let's assume a patient, just, I think I've just said it, um, okay, well, let's, say, let's assume a patient is on a P450 inhibitor, okay? Let's pick one. Let's say, let's assume a patient is, um, or let's say, let's say, assume a patient is on, is on a statin, atobastatin, simvastatin, uh, and then you want to prescribe, um, you're, you're thinking of prescribing uh, maybe phloxetine, you know, for depression, you need to be aware that phloxetin being a P450 inhibitor is going to increase the availability, how much statin is, you know, present in the patient's blood or body. And what that means is that the patient now becomes more at risk of developing statin side effects, you know, the myalgia, the, you know, the muscle aches, uh, and general body aches, and even uh, hepatitis, you know, liver inflammation. So it's just for us to understand how these things can you know affect um drug metabolism so there's another acronym for the p450 enzyme inhibitors this list is not exhaustive there are so many medications that fall within this p450 enzyme you know inhibitor class or category but this acronym is sick faces dot cord so you see, rather than saying dot com so sick faces dot cord and that stands for uh, sodium valparate, isoniazid, which is an you know anti-tuberculous medication, sodium valparate and anticonvulsant, the C is ciprofloxacin, which is a quinolone antibiotic, and the K is ketoconazole, which is an azo antifungal medication. The F is floxetine, you know, so all all the other SSRI, floxetine, sertraline, um, you know, paroxetine, they're all P450 inhibitors acute or you know, alcohol ingestion or binge drinking uh, actually suppresses but chronic alcoholism enhances or in, you know induces the p450 now cimetidine which is a um, h2 receptor blocker 
similar to ranitidine, so they are their, their P450 inhibitors. The E there in the faces is erythromycin, you know, macrolides, so clarithromycin, for instance, which is a uh, commonly prescribed antibiotic, typically used as second line in a, in a lot of you know infections, a lot of uh, respiratory tract infections. Um, so just for you to be aware, you know, it's very common for for patients who are on certain medications, you know, like met, um, with methotrexate, for instance, a patient who is on methotrexate, you find that that it's very common for us as doctors or health professionals or health practitioners to give that advice to patients that they should stop taking their methotrexate whilst they are on medications like clarithromycin. And I'll explain why. Clarithromycin being an AP450 inhibitor is going to it's going to suppress the enzymes that are supposed to metabolize methotrexate. So you're going to have excess, a relatively excess amount of methotrexate in the, in the patient's body. And what that means is that the patient becomes more uh, prone to having side effects of methotrexate, being mellow suppression, bone marrow suppression. So they become more at risk of developing, you know, uh, bone marrow suppression, you know, severe infections, becoming septic and things like that, and even severe anemia from bone marrow suppression. So we advise them to, you know, not to take the metotrexate. Uh, metotrexate is usually given once a week, so not to, to skip it uh, during that week of them being on, you know, a macrolide like erythromycin or clarithromycin you know, or any of these other medications. Um, so omeprazole, which is a commonly prescribed medication, you know, a lot of times patients come with uh, gastritis kind of symptoms and we prescribe lansoprazole or omeprazole. It's very important to know that omeprazole has a P450 inhibitory effect. So we need to be thinking about that when we're prescribing this, you know, some of these commonly prescribed medications. Deuterazem, verapamil, you know, the uh, beta blocker cardiac medications can also have this P450 inhibitory effect. I've mentioned some of these examples, but let's reiterate. So let's look at warfarin. Now, a P450 enzyme inhibitor would increase the risk of bleeding. Why and how? Because a P4, now warfarin is an anticoagulant and, you know, it's typically uh, monitored using the INR, International Normalized Ratio, okay, which is used to monitor the effectiveness uh, or, or, or or the over effectiveness over prescribing of warfarin to, to get the target INR for the patient. Now, if you give a P450 enzyme inhibitor, what it then means is that you will have excess warfarin in the body. Warfarin is not being metabolized at the rate where it should normally be metabolized. You're having it being accumulated, you know, it's accumulating excessively, and then obviously there will increased risk of bleeding. Conversely, if you give a P450 enzyme inducer, okay, like maybe carbazepine, you, you prescribe that erroneously without really checking, what's going to happen is that uh, you're going to have excessive metabolism, excessive breakdown of warfarin. So you're going to have a relatively um, depleted or replete amounts of, of warfarin. So the patient's risk of developing blood clot or, or thrombosis will then, will then, you know, will then go up. And usually you notice, the, you notice that if you're monitoring, closely monitoring the INR, you notice those changes in the INR. We've talked about statin, you know, uh, atovastatin. So a common statin is generally well tolerated. They have generally well tolerated medications, uh, very useful in reducing cardiovascular um, events, stroke, heart attacks, in, and also prescribed in patients with a chronic kidney disease, to you know because it helps to improve um, renal. It helps to prevent worsening of maybe blocked renal arteries, for instance. Uh, now, if you give a P450 enzyme inhibitor, same analogy. The enzyme the liver is not metabol metabolizing the atovastatin or any other statin adequately or as rapidly as it should normally do. Statins accumulate and then you have more statin side effects, myalgia, uh, liver, liver inflammation. And now when you think about if you give a P450 enzyme, uh, you know, inducer, you might not have enough you know, uh, beneficial effects from statin because you're just taking away the statin, you're metabolizing the statin uh, very rapidly. Just to finally say that health professionals are always encouraged to confirm drug interactions before prescribing any medication. 
uh, in that is to ensure that patients do not come to any harm. And as I said earlier, uh, in those of us who use systems, you know, IT systems, um, you know, computers, uh, you know, you commonly have well-designed, well-built systems that flag up drug interactions if, you know, whenever you try to prescribe certain medications. But I believe some of those systems are not 100% you know, error-proof. So it's always good for us to double-check, especially when patients are on certain medications that can have serious side effects, medications like lithium, you know, digoxin, cardiac medications, anticonvulsants, um, you know, anti-cancer medications, anti-neoplastic medications. It's always very good to double check, you know, the medication you're about prescribing, methotrexate, you know, all those uh, DMADs and the immuno immunotherapies. You have, always have to double check those things because you can tilt a patient into excessive, into under therapeutic effects or excessive side effects. Because if you have excessive therapeutic effects, it then becomes excessive side effects. So we always need to check these things and make sure that everyone that is receiving a medication is kept safe. Thank you for listening. Thanks for your engagement. Cheers, guys. Bye.